I'd like to welcome everyone to the 15th in a series of free webinars hosted by the Chamber of Commerce under the theme Supporting Businesses in a Time of Crisis. I'm Will Pinot, I'm the CEO of the Chamber. Today's topic uh, webinar is Work 101, an employer's guide to registering and utilizing the jobs portal. We are partnering with the Workforce Opportunity Residency Cayman Agency known as WORK for this session. The purpose is to provide employers with step-by-step -step guidance on submitting job advertisements on the, job, the Jobs Cayman portal, as well as registration. The session will cover the complete process from the point of registration to approval of the ad advertisement by work. Today, we are joined by several members of the work team who will be contributing to this discussion, including the interim director, Jeremy Scott, um, Caitlin Gacosta, the customer care officer who will be de delivering the main presentation. Other members of the work team will be contributing to today's discussions. And joining um, Caitlin will be Sharice Dixon, customer care officer, Nettie Wagner, customer care manager, O'Neill Roberts, customer care manager, and Renda Cornwell, a customer head of the customer care. So before I turn over to the Jeremy for a few opening um, comments, uh, let me remind you that you may submit questions during the presentation during, during, uh, via the chat feature. We will also be having our usual question and answer segment at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll be taking your questions during this uh, the session. There's a raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen, which allows you to indicate if you wish to ask a question at which time I'll bring you up on the screen and unmute your microphone. And at the end of the session, um, we'll say a few thank yous and just to let everybody know that the uh, presentation as well as the recording will be posted to the Chamber's um, chambercovidupdates.ky website uh, probably by the end of today if you've missed any part of it. So, just like to say thank you again for joining us. I'd like to thank the work team and I'll turn it over to the, the new interim director for a few words. Jeremy. Thank you, Will. Um, good afternoon to all participants joining us today. Um, I can't see the actual numbers, but I understand it's actually quite large. So uh, welcome to everyone. Um, you know, thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you today step-by-step -step tutorial on registering on our online portal, Name the Jobs Cayman, and hopefully you will learn new skills in navigating the system. I would also like to express our appreciation to the Chamber of Commerce for arranging this, um, this webinar and connecting with us uh, today via this forum. And as an introduction, my name is Jeremy Scott. I'm the currently acting director of work. I'm excited to see that real out of challenges resulting from the worldwide pandemic, we as a country have been passed press really to overcome anxieties of using technology to its potential with providing large forums such as this, really capitalizing on time and finances while still providing great value in service delivery. I'm also very proud to be a part of the journey with amazing, dedicated and hardworking staff, really whilst entering an era which labor needs and supply with our islands can roll out systematically to the public via this online platform with goals really of and I'm sure a lot of you will uh, relate to uh, reducing wait lines in the halls for hours on end, um, no loss paperwork, increased efficiencies and processes from start to finish. Um, Jobs came on uh, is a new way forward using technology um, to improve our efficiencies and simplified approach to services offered by work. By creating a new way for companies to seek employees and a new way for persons to seek work. The overall goal of lowering Caymanian unemployment or underemployment can be achieved. I have online with me uh, members of Team Work, uh, as I, I would like to, to call them, who directly re represent our customer care team and who will introduce themselves shortly. I believe we may have some of our uh, senior leaders within the ministry um, logged in as well. And if not, um, we'll definitely like to express our appreciation. Um, for their tireless support as always um, in supporting uh, the department. So without any further delay, I would like to hand over now to customer care, where really I may actually possibly learn a few things myself about Jobs Cayman and its potential. 
thank you again for being here and enjoy. I guess we're going to turn it over to Caitlin for the presentation. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to this webinar about our portal. Next slide, please. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to get to the Jobs Cayman portal. Next, please. So you will go on the work website, which I have provided here, and it'll bring you up to the page that you will see here. Next, please. In the top right-hand corner, you will see Jobs Cayman. You'll click on that. Next. And this will appear. So you'll just head on to the log in section. Next, please. And this is what the portal will look like once you click onto the login section. If you haven't done so already, we were, we're going to walk through on how to create a Signet account if you have not done so. Next, please. On the portal, we give, give you the option at the bottom to register for a Signet account. So at the bottom, you'll click, um, click on where it says click here. Next, please. And then you'll select register for an account. It's in blue. So you click on that. Next, please. So this page will present itself. You'll fill in your first name, your last name, some people say surname, and the email that you would like to utilize. Then you'll select next once you have completed that, and you'll create a strong but rememberable Remember, um, next please. Um, if it's for a company, that is fine. You can, it's fine, but the best thing that you'll do is actually use your personal email because you would register as a person first and then we'll proceed registering as an employer. But we'll get in to that a little later. Then you'll answer some of the security questions that is there, at least the ones with the little asterisks along the side or stars. It's about your father's middle name, favorite color, and your favorite holiday. Once you have filled that out, you'll just hit the register button at the bottom of the page. If you have more than one company, you can use the same login, same login. You can register more than one company underneath one, one user. So this is how to reset a password. So it's pretty much the same process as how you're gonna register, go to the portal, and click the blue writing that says click here. Next, please. Then it gives you an option on the right hand side that says reset password. Then you put in the email that you you have been using and you'll fill out you in the box next to the picture, you'll fill that out. Then you'll hit continue. Next, and then you'll be emailed a verification code and you'll put that in that bar that you see there. After that, you'll hit the continue button. Then this will allow you to recreate your new password.
next please. Then you hit submit and that's a new password. So the registration process explained. Every user of Jobs Man must be registered as a person. Once a person's information has been approved, they can expand their account to include a job seeker profile, an employer profile, or both. And pro employer profiles have the ability to share access. This facilitates third party agents acting on the behalf of the employer as well as access within the employer's company to multiple staff members. The employer will be responsible for managing who has access to the employer profile and the level of access granted or revoked for each profile. Also, the employer can give full access to a delegate, delegated staff member to operate as the owner. The profiles have that have been registered as an agent on the person's account can determine what services they have access to access by the account holder. For example, submitting jobs and submitting applications. Each registrant's intake form will then be sent to the customer care officers whom will review and process the documents. This may take between one to three business days to complete. With every case that is sent back to the registrant, they have 10 calendar days to make the necessary adjustments that was requested. Failure to comply, it will result in the system will automatically cancel the case. for person registration processes. When registering as a person, there are some documents that are required. The documents the registrant will need to provide are as follows. For a Caymanian, they need a valid photo ID, such as a driver's license, a passport, or a voter's ID. And the evidence, such as a voter's ID, a birth certificate, a Cayman status certificate, a Cayman status stamp in the passport, a Cayman status letter, or an acknowledgement letter. For permanent residency, a valid ID, such as a driver's license or a passport. And with the evidence, such as the residency stamp in the passport, the residency letter or certificate. For work permit holders, a valid ID, such as a driver's license or their passport. And for the evidence, their work permit stamp in the passport and their, or their work permit license. Is anybody else having issues hearing me? No issues here, you sound great. Okay, that's good. Um, for employer registration explained, after the person registration has been approved, as mentioned earlier, the employer registration aspects become available. With the employer registration, each required field must be completed. The employer's name has to reflect the name on the trade and business license or the operational license. Um, the trade and business license needs to include the file number and the license number. And for the persons that have an operational license, if you have available the, license, uh, the certificate number. The documents that are required to be provided are a valid trade and business license, but if it's in the renewal stage, we will take the receipt and the previous TNB license or the operation license or certificate, a valid ID, an authorization letter, and the annual returns. 
The authorization letter is only needed if the person's name is not on the certificate or the tra um, trade and business license. That goes along with the annual returns. This is the idle timer message. When the idle timer message appears, it indicates that the session was open, has timed out, click OK and proceed to log back in. With any information that you may have put in without saving would have been deleted. Now we're gonna go on to the how-to guides. How to register as a person. So you'll log into the the jobs came in portal as soon as you register your signet and then you'll hit the new button in the corner then the option as register person then you'll fill out the information you see there um then you'll upload your passport under your valid ID under the passport and proof of your immigration status under evidence. It takes a JPEG and PDF. You'll hit the tick under the disclaimer, then hit the submit button. So this is how to update your person's information, your person profile. Under the assumption that you guys haven't, have not logged back in, You'll log into the portal. You'll hit new, then update person profile. You'll update any of your information needed that you would like to change, like your number or your address. Then when you're done with that, you'll hit submit down at the bottom of the page. How to register as an employer. Like I said before, we're under the assumption that you are not logged in. So you'll log into the portal. Then you'll select the new button. Then employer registration will pop down. And you'll fill out all the required information that you see there. You'll hit save draft down at the bottom. Then you will upload your valid trade and business license or operational license, a valid ID, an authorization letter, and the annual returns. When you're done, you will hit the submit button down at the bottom. How to update your employer information. Under the assumption that you are not logged in, you'll log in. Then you'll scroll down to see, hit the new button, then scroll down to see update employer profile. Then you'll select the company you would like to use. We'll put, if you have multiple companies, you'll put in three percentage signs that activates as a wild card and that'll allow all the companies that you have registered under you or acting as an agent will for will come down and you will choose. Next please. Then you will update any information where necessary that you think needs to be changed. Next, then you'll hit the submit button once you're done. How to add an associated company. An associated company is some, if you have one major corporation and then you'll break down, have other companies that fall underneath it. So under the assumption again that you're not logged in, and then you'll hit new, update employer profile. Then you'll select the company that you would like to use. Then you'll scroll down to where it says manage associated employers. And you'll search for the company that you want to link. 
You can just type in the company's name in the search bar. Right, um, you'll say search employer and then there's a search bar right there. Then you'll click add and then you'll hit submit once you're done. How to add an agent. You'll log into the Jobs Cayman portal, hit new, update employer profile. Then you'll select the company that you want to use. Then you'll scroll down to where it says manage associated agents or persons. This is where you will use um, the identification number that each person that has registered with us that get um, their identification number. You can find that on the your person um, person profile where I showed you to how when you went to go update your personal information. You'll put it in the search bar and then you'll hit search agent and then add. Then you'll hit submit once you're done. How do you submit a job post? Under the assumption again, you'll sign into the portal. You'll hit the new button. Then you'll select, select submit job post. Then you'll select the company that you would like to use. You'll scroll down to the bottom of the page to where it says add and edit job posting. You hit the plus sign for to pull up the form. You fill out all the forms that you see there. Everything in red is mandatory. When you're done filling out the job post information, you'll hit save, then submit. Please note that if you want to clone a job post, select a job post, then hit clone post, then submit. Same process for copying a job post. Vetting and service level agreements. Once a job post is submitted, it will be vetted by a customer care supervisor prior to being posted on the Jobs Command portal. All postings will be reviewed within one to three business days of the receipt. If the vetting process yields no red flags, like the salary is below minimum wage, then the customer care supervisor will approve the posting and the listing will be made available on the portal immediately. If the vetting process raises some concerns about the statutory requirements, the customer care supervisor will reject the job post and return it to the employer slash agent with the specific comments on why it was not approved and inviting the customer to correct the job post. The employer slash agent will have up to 10 business days to revise and resubmit to the customer care supervisor. All revised submissions will be returned through the system and will go back to the same customer care supervisor that reviewed it initially. Once those revisions have been made, the job listing can be approved and posted immediately immediately on the Jobs Cayman portal. If the deadline is not met, the posting will not be listed on the Jobs Cayman portal, and the case will automatically cancel out of the system. How to review applicants. Log into the Jobs Cayman portal. Select the blue writing that says review applications. You'll select the blue writing that says resume to see the person's resume. Then you'll make a decision 
if you're going to hire the person or not. If the applicant, if you're not going to hire the applicant, you would need to leave a comment stating why the person was not hired. And then once that is done, you will hit submit down on the bottom of the page. How to cancel a case. You will log into the portal. Then you will select the case that you want to delete by clicking on the blue words. On the left side of the screen, you'll click events. Then cancel. And then you'll put select your reason. Type cancel into the comment box and then hit the button that says cancel case. You'll hit the back button to return to the main screen and the case has been removed. Some additional information. For any troubleshooting assistance or queries you may have, please contact one of our customer care officers. All the emails are there and you can contact us on the number below between the hours of nine and four. You can contact either me or Sharice and our emails are provided and please copy our customer care manager, Ms. Nettie Wagner. That concludes our training session for today. Thank you for your um, participation. You may also visit our website at www.work.ky for the step-by-step -step guide on how to register and post jobs and for any further information about the portal. Is there any other questions? Well, maybe I can begin. Um, is at this particular time because people are beginning to the registration process. Is it correct to say that you're not charging to post jobs to the jobs portal? Not yet. When do you think that function would be enabled? What's your think your timeline is for that? We will notify the public when we have a clear picture on when that will happen. Okay. <clears throat> um, if there is, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and then just see if there's any, uh, there's 70 people have responded to the chat. So <laughs> there are lots of questions. So let's see, um, I'm not sure if anybody, I think Rhonda, um, yeah. Do you automatically delete job postings after two weeks? I think, is that is that right? Is, are they automatically deleted after two weeks? No, they will just stop being active after two weeks, but they do have the option when they're creating the job post to extend it more than two weeks if need be. It will always be saved in their portal for whatever, if they wanna clone the job post. All right, so I just wanna remind people that this PDF, this presentation, as well as this video uh, recording will be posted to our website um, so you can get access to it as well. And then there's some of the other questions that we have in the chat, so let me look here. Um, what if this account is for a company? I think you, you said everybody has to register as an individual first, right? Yes. And then, then you. And then they can register as an employer. Then you go in as an employer. And again, what if you have more than one company? Maybe you just remind us on how that process works. You just register every one of the companies under that main profile. Yep. Every company that you own, or let's say you own, you go through the same process under the same um, pro um, portal or your user, and then you'll just go through the same registration for the employer. Okay. And um, again, is there, is there any deadline to uh, 
uh, register? I mean, obviously, if you need to register, if in fact you are, are actually seeking um, any local employment, right? Am I correct? Or is it really just if you decide to use the portal to find Caymanians or legal residents? For both. So, so if you want to find Caymanians, you'll register with the company and it's for whoever is local and is trying to find local work. Okay, so as an employer, it is mandatory then that you register and that if you are seeking any employees, you need to put the jobs on the jobs portal. Yes. Okay, so I wanna make sure everybody's clear on that. So that's why this webinar is so important. I don't know what your percentage of people who have actually registered yet. I just wanna make sure a lot of people understand that they really have to go through this process. Um, let's see here. I'm looking through some of the chat questions. If you are registered with the NWDA and you still have access to the email address, can you continue to use the same email address and password to log in to the jobs came in portal. Yes. And if you already were registered with the NWDA, the same email and the same password will allow you to log in on this one. So if you have any, if you used, let's say your personal email for like either customs or any e-government portal, that email and password that you originally created will allow you to gain access to our portal as well. Excellent. There's one question here. Let me see if I have this correct. So for companies, you will need the business license, the register of directors and a letter of authority from one of the directors to give an employee uh, the ability to use this portal for the company. Yes. Perfect. And a valid ID. And a valid ID, okay. Um, Ms. Nettie, I think, you, did you want to say a few words as well? I see you have, I have you on mute. Let me get you. So did you want to add anything else, Nettie? Uh, no, I think she just covered it, but you're here to take any more questions. I know we were trying to get back to all of those that Ben sent in uh, chat messages, so. Thank you, you're doing a great job. So I'm just repeating some of the questions for the benefit of the other people in, in the chat and um, still having people join us, believe it or not. Um, That's good. How, how does it show on the job seeker side? How are you able to see our vacancies is one of the questions. We have that also on our portal. They can go straight to the portal. Uh -huh. And we have all the steps laid out as well of how they can view the job posts and those that have applied for the job posts. Additionally, you know, if they need any further assistance, we have been answering back to emails within 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. So, you know, sometimes just walking uh, people through the steps via phone has been helpful as well. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, definitely all the steps are on our portal. But if they need further assistance, our emails are provided there and we can reach out and, and walk them through it, you know. Yeah, somebody's asking if we can, if the person, when can you actually see all the positions that are available? You can see it if, if I'm, if I, if I, I've created my own uh, identification on the site. So if I go in right now, I should be able to see all the jobs that are available. Is that right? Or not? When it comes, when it comes to looking for any available jobs that are on our site, they will go through a process where they'll say like, um, when they log in, they'll look for a view available jobs and they'll just hit search down at the bottom of the page that will appear and the whole list of the job posts that are there will become available and they can apply. Okay, so you're going to be able to see all the jobs that are listing as long as you have a profile, you can see what's what's there at any time, right? Yeah, under a job seeker position. Under job seeker, right? Yes. Um, so the other question, I guess, is because everyone was so used to the old system where you had to advertise in a newspaper. Now, do you still have to advertise in a newspaper or does it's mainly 
you can just advertise on the jobs portal and that and that should cover you. Um, where we are asking to still post a job in the newspaper for right now, because we do not have every Cayman registered with us. So just having the job position still in the newspaper and with us just gives everyone a fair chance to still apply. Makes sense and whatever. So the only thing about from the, your standpoint though is you want to make sure the ad is the same wherever it's posted, right? Yes. So you're not going to have a different ad for the newspaper compared to the job portal? Yes. Everything has to reflect the same. Um, did somebody said, is there a condition on your business staffing plan that you need to advertise? Not sure with that. Um, how will immigration deal with the work permit is the next question. How will immigration deal with a work permit submitted for an expat or potential employee and then a Caymanian application is received after the cutoff deadline or once the application has already been submitted to immigration. I'm not sure if anybody wants to respond to that. Ms. Renda, you want to be unmuted as well. So let me unmute you as well. So does anybody know how to answer that question? Repeat the question, Will, please. Um, basically, it's, it's uh, how will immigration deal with a work permit submitted for an expat or potential employee and then a Caymanian application is received after the cutoff deadline or once the application has already been submitted to immigration for processing? The, the, you cannot submit any applications once the advert has been cut off. Once it expires, no more applications can be submitted. Okay, so there is the deadline. It's, an, it's a hard and fast deadline. And then if there's anybody who applies after that deadline who may be Caymanian, but you've submitted a work permit application, then that application uh, from the Caymanian won't be considered because it's past the deadline basically, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, is there a way for employers to browse candidates or persons registered as job seekers? So for employers, for example, they're looking for, they're looking for staff, right? And, and can they actually review the Caymanians and legal residents who basically may be looking for a job? Um, and if an employer sees that they're available, uh, could they contact them on their own? As far as I'm aware, they're only able to see persons who actually apply uh, for positions that they've advertised. Okay. Because that, that would be kind of interesting uh, where an employer could actually see who's, um, who's actually registered and looking, you know? Um, so maybe it's something you guys want to consider for the future. I guess, I guess you had to comply with the privacy, um, the data protection, Right, so basically Correct. somebody may not be wanting to be approached, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point, Will. Yeah. Um, it says, will you consider adverts on social media? Is it, is it a matter of, of, of considering them or, because let me ask you a question here because this may be a, a fickle one. You said that you would encourage employers to actually advertise in the newspapers as well, because not everybody is registered on the portal yet. I completely understand that. But once you get to the position where a lot of employers are already on there, does it matter that anybody has put any ads elsewhere? That won't, that won't dictate whether the the application is, if it's a work permit, is, is approved or declined, right? Well, with the recent passing of the transition law, uh, the amend, amendment transition law, it is requirement now that 
it is mandatory for all persons seeking to, or all employers seeking to apply, apply for a work permit to register on the portal. That is mandatory. However, if they do advertise elsewhere locally, in a local newspaper, on social media, or overseas, they are required to also submit copies of those um, advertisements, in addition to any applicants that may have applied. So they get a pretty lengthy question here. Thanks, Kimberly. I have experienced that when attempting to post ads in bulk, after around seven days, all ads saved in the drafts are deleted. Ooh. Um, I would like to ask how long does an advert stay in your drafts prior to it being deleted? That's her first question. So she's saying basically that she's, uh, she's on the portal and that when she's attempted to post ads in bulk, after seven days, all ads saved in her drafts are deleted. Is, is that something that you were aware of? Ms. Nettie, I don't know if you could speak to that. Let me see, hopefully she's... Okay. Sorry, Nettie. Yes, it's not no problem. I was trying to talk, but I can't last question. I was trying to answer someone else on a message there. You're just talking about whether your 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 post ads ad. Um, she says here, I have experienced that when attempting to post ads in bulk around or after around seven days, all ads saved in the drafts are deleted. I would like okay. to ask how long does the ad stay in your drafts prior to it being deleted? It should, yeah, okay, I see what was the question. So what, what should be normally happen, it should stay there for 30 days actually on their inbox if they haven't completed it. So I will raise this with our IT um, group because normally when they open a, a case, it should stay there for them to finish it up within at least the 30 days. Anything after that, then they would actually erase off of their inbox automatically. Okay. All right, but I would, can um, that person that raised that question send me an email so I can look at their uh, account, the company, okay, perfect. and okay. I can liaise with them then directly because I would want to take some uh, screenshots if they can send screenshots of when it happens. It's just better for us to document. Absolutely. So if they can email me the, the, the query there, I can uh, follow up with our IT section says here, if you, were, if you want uh, the newspaper ads to reflect the jobs came in tabs, would it be possible for your team to expand the character field? In addition, would this be strictly enforced? Um, I'm not sure if I understand that. Probably something that probably uses the portal a lot. Not sure if they're referring to where they fill out the comments for maybe for a job post. Maybe they need more more space to fill that out. Is that what they're referring to? I'm assuming so. But again, I think that the individuals can probably send you a direct email anyway. But what we can do as well, Will, is that if they want to address questions that we don't get to answer on, on this webinar right now, they can address them to you. You can uh, compile them and you can email them to me. And Absolutely. then I will assure to get these answers back to you. Then you can disseminate them amongst all of them, you know, so we can all be on the same page. Oh, that'd be great. Um, and again, everybody hear that. I think my, my email is will, W-I-L dot P-I-N-E-A-U at caymanchamber.ky. I'll post my email address in the chat as well for everyone to have it. Um, another question is once a job has been posted and is pending approval, I normally notice that the position has been deleted. Can you please advise why this is happening? Well, the only reason why I see I could say that something has been canceled out is because they never actually went through the whole process in terms of submitting the job post. What we've seen is that people would actually fill out the job post that they're working on, but it's a very little trick there at the end that if you don't do submit, it means you're still working on it. So we've noticed that then what would happen, they're still waiting for it to, to be approved, but it never did reach us. So we can't approve something that is, hasn't been released from the employer side. 
okay. if that makes sense okay but we have noticed that you know and that's the reason why i can answer that is that we've noticed that uh, employers has reached out saying they're still waiting for it to be approved however it was never released so it's very important that they make note of that at the bottom of the job post to submit to click on submit if not it's just going to stay on their inbox katie if you wish to add more sharice that's fine with me as well Okay, I think I covered it then. <laughs> you covered it. Um, so for what, what I noticed, um, what I also noticed was that a lot of questions were surging as well for job seekers. Uh, right. We kind of concentrated more, mostly this webinar on catering to the employers. However, if there's any questions, as I said, in terms of job seeker, feel free, Will, that you, they can address them to you and we can answer them. Additional, as I said previously on our work um, site, it also has all of these steps that we just provided to you guys. Yeah, and again, uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem with organizing one for workers who want to register as well. I mean, it's just, it's-, it's That's every, a great idea. Yeah, I mean, I can open it up to anybody as long as you register. I mean, we have a platform that can take up to 500 people, so the end of the day, um, as long as I, more people registering, the, the lower the unemployment rate can be for Caymanians who are maybe looking for, we want to connect the employers and, and the Caymanians as much as possible. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why that, yes, it has been mandated for employers to register with our portal and optional for them to continue advertising a newspaper. However, because we're trying to populate the portal so it can actually meet our goal in terms of matching correctly an employer with a prospective employee, uh, we ask them to continue advertising locally, but for now, you know, to, until we can actually be fully populated, the option would remain there if they wish to advertise. Another question that I saw that kept populating is as well as for um, the adverts for work permit board and BSB, that hasn't changed yet. It's still valid for the three months for work permit board and the six months for BSB. Uh, for job seekers applying, um, one of the reasons why you can't go on the portal and say, hey, let me just see who's looking for a job, is like how you said, right? Um, if, yeah. I apply, if I'm a job seeker and I apply, I'm given the, the, the company the, or the business the rights to see my personal information or my information. So versus you just being able to go and see anybody as a job seeker. Yeah, I think it's important though. I, I... I think newspaper now is not required. I see a, I see a question here, right? It, it's not required anymore, but it's encouraged, right? That's what I hear. That's um, right. So there's a person that asks the question, so is it required or not? It's not required, but it's encouraged until the system, so that we get well, more employers up on the system so that we can, we can actually provide Caymanians where there's many opportunities to be connected with a job as possible. And so the employers can see as well that you can apply hopefully seamlessly through the portal. That's correct. Yeah. And, um, and again, there's some other questions here. I mean, they're coming in fast and furious now. <laughs> I know. I was trying <laughs> to you guys are very popular people. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I think the best way, well, because what's happening is that a lot of the questions are being repeated. Right. So if they can just address them to you and then you can, you know, address them to me directly, that's fine. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible on them. Right. And again, you know, ultimately you're going to have to pay to post a job. And I understand it's $25 a post. That's what that's it correct. is, right? That's correct. So that's a question that came up. So it's $25 CI post. They're, they're, if I understand it, they're actually putting in a, a payment portal as part of it, so you can pay online, am I right? That is correct. correct. That'll that's be correct. all online as well. So that's good. It's good news, right? We're going moving onto the, these online platforms, which is fantastic. We're embracing e-commerce and e-business. So That's right. Um, 
again, I, does anybody else have any significant questions? And there's one here that is kind of an interesting question. Um, I see you smiling, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Caught your attention too. <laughs> How will the job seeker portal assist convicted persons back into the workforce? Well, that's beyond this presentation. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's, that's a whole nother presentation. Obviously, that's more of a government um, initiative that has to be put in place to get people into the workforce who may have may have convictions. So I didn't. I'm not making light of it at all. It's a serious issue, but it's also an issue that you have to have a strategy to do because you, there's some a lot of sensitivity among employers about hiring people who may have been convicted in the past. And I do know at this time as well, Will, that our employment services unit is currently working with some of those persons as well. Oh, okay, that's that's fantastic because obviously they need to get uh, get get jobs just like the rest of us, right? Yeah. Um, well, again, I here's one just for clarity. I see you are not required to advertise for a domestic helper position. Please confirm this is the correct position. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so you don't have to apply to do job posts for any domestic helper positions. A nanny, yes. Domestic helper, you don't have to. Okay, so what's the process then? So you explain that to me. So you, just so I'm clear on it. So you don't have to advertise it? No, you don't have to advertise anything for a uh, domestic helper position. Are there it's any one other of positions those like that? Um, so, uh, well, sorry. <laughs> All right, so what's going to happen, right? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm, uh, yes. Okay. So we're, we're working on that part, but what the portal would, would do is that when you're actually going to submit a work permit, it will ask you if this position is exempt, meaning like a domestic helper doesn't need to be advertised. So that would come into place once you're actually moving on to a work permit. And, and again, are there, because as, as this crisis continues, we have to be realistic. Um, obviously our ultimate goal is to ensure that Caymanians get employment and also the employers get the, the labor that they need with the skills they need as well to run their businesses. So are there any positions right now that you're aware, like a domestic helper that, you know, you don't really need to go through the process? That's so, more, so what, what's going to happen, right? The employers would only feel more forced, I guess, to say in the lack of a better word, to register with us if at some point they have the intentions to move on to a work permit, right? So if you're going to move on to a work permit, you it, it's in your best interest to ad advertise with the portal to save the time that you would um, have to wait for this to be processed. You know, if not, it's going to be a delay. It's not going to move on. Okay. But um, this, this list will be provided at a further date as well. Um, right. Jobs that will not be required to be advertised. Excellent. All right, well, again, um, I mean, I, I see, how long will the listing be valid is a question. I'm assuming that's a job posting, a listing is a job posting. How long is it valid? I you guess, mean that the, the time for the job post to be advertised is 14 yeah. calendar days. 14 calendar days for a job yes. to be advertised. Yes. That's an important, that's important for everyone to understand. Approvals takes, as I see somebody's asking how long approval takes, right? Right now I can tell you that uh, we have been processing all cases coming in within 24 hours. Uh, the normal process is uh, one to three days to for a first uh, application, first time application. Um, if we send it back for revision required, it takes, uh, we give you about 10 days for you to reply back. If you fail to do that, then the system will cancel your case out. Right. Now there's small business or micro business question here, which I think it's yes, uh, CHD, so very small companies that would like to look for one person every few years or so, 
Will they still need to register in the portal if they are potentially looking to go the route of a work permit? Assume they have an advertised in local newspapers. I mean, the reality is you should be looking for Caymanians first and foremost. So the reality is you should, should register with the portal anyway, um, yeah. just so that you have it uh, available to you. And unless it's, it's one of those well, positions that have highly skilled and there's really a limited number of Caymanians in the marketplace. Well, like I was saying, well, the thing is that the way the portal is going to be this is, is actually designed is that you cannot move on to a work permit if you have not advertised unless you have been exempt to. So the system itself will not allow you to move on once you put in data for a work permit because it will ask you if the post has been advertised. So, yeah. okay. So, so Kimberly's asking, you know, what is the maximum period of time you can advertise a position for? They, it can't go no less than 14 days, but the employer has the discretion to, to add on more weeks if they wish to. The calendar will be there and it will show you that the first 14 days is blocked, that it can't go no less, but they can move on to another week, two weeks, three weeks, a month or two. Right. Yeah. The maximum that they can ad advertise it for is six months on the portal. Mm -hmm. That's months. correct. That's good to know. Thanks. Although, I don't know why people will be looking for six months for somebody, but <laughs> they know what business they're running. <laughs> um, and then there's a question about, you know, when you do register on the portal, especially what happens if a company is not in good standing? Would that registration be declined? If a business is not in good standing? Right. Uh, well, currently, uh, that, that's probably a question that we could pose to Mr. Scott. <laughs> Hi, afternoon again. Um, yeah, I think the, the position or the, the appropriate answer for that would be that, you know, the allowance for business to, to operate is not with, with work department. Um, it could be with the Department of Commerce and Investment. Um, but that, that would be a, an answer that would be provided, um, you know, from the registrant authority. Okay. So again, the question, some of the questions come in fast and furious. So um, April ads say expired in the system, but for a work permit board application, if they are good for three months, can we still use the ad with expired status? Hmm. I think you can clone an ad, can't you? I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's, it's a cloned ad. Um, maybe I'm, I'm answering your questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think you're right, Will. Um, in that scenario, if I'm understanding that question as well, um, you can actually have those adverts cloned and uh, reposted. I mean, right. unless there's been some form of change. If there's been some form of change, then obviously you can't clone it. Um, it has to be reapproved. Right. All right, well, we're coming up to an hour, I think, yeah, close to an hour for the presentation. So, um, like I said, I've posted my, my email address, and um, if anybody has any additional questions that they, they'd like to, um, you know, post, um, please, please send them to me, and I'll be more than happy to submit them to work. And I'd just like to say thank you, Jeremy, um, Kyle, and Nettie, and the all, and Sharice, and everybody for uh, your presentation. It's been excellent. I hopefully it, it answered a lot of the questions that people have, and it will help more employers to get registered on the site. And I know, like any new system, there there's going to be kinks in it. And um, the reality is, the only way we can improve it is to find those kinks and to address them. So I'll be doing my part to forward any the questions that I may receive from people from this webinar and also from uh, chamber members and other businesses going forward. Just like to say, just awesome. Thanks, thanks to the guy at work. You know, just your whole customer service um, response has been outstanding in this crisis. And just want to say thank you very much for everything that you're doing.
Yep. Thank you, Will. And uh, thank you for all uh, participating today. It allowed us to cover quite a bit of ground. <laughs> so obviously technology has played a part in that. So uh, we're definitely moving forward and uh, looking at, at improving our customer service and our response as well. So really appreciate it. Well, thanks again. And thank you for everyone for tuning in. And our next webinar takes place on Friday. And for those businesses who are having challenges converting their business to e-commerce, we have an e-commerce expert coming on on Friday that can hopefully help you transition your business to get onto a payment portal or gateway so that you can transition your business during these difficult times. So once again, thanks everyone for participating and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.